My name is Andy Starnes. I'm the founder and owner of Insight Training LLC. We are thermography certified fire professionals that train firefighters and industrial and military across the United States and internationally. Our world is basically thermal imaging and emergency services. We're out here today at Bridgeport Fire Expo and we're working with the Performance Under Pressure Cadre, focusing on our portion is the size up portion or what we call the Tactical 360. And then the students are enhancing and learning their skills on search and search priority, whether it's vent inner search, fire attack, and locating and removing the victims. Uh, we, what we're about to do today is our students are going to learn how to enhance their size up. A size up basically is a plan of what's actually happening to the building out here and what the firefighters are going to do to mitigate that emergency and stop that fire or, or locate and remove victims. So our students are going to focus on the size up aspect and how the camera can help them. And what we're going to do is do a short classroom outside where we're going to share some information with them about size up, how to enhance that. Then we're going to break it down and go over and use what's called the Max Fire Box. Basically, it's a wonderful prop to teach fire behavior and thermal imaging with. We can get temperatures inside that box up to 2,000 degrees. We can show them fire behavior. We can show them all kinds of different things with the thermal imaging camera, the key attributes. We can show them how we can overcome limitations. And once we're done with that, we're going to move into actual 360s of the structure while they're doing these scenarios with fire attack and search. So the students are going to exercise their brain with us, and then they're going to go inside and exercise their body and skills that they've learned from the cadre here of performance under pressure. Uh, our goal, quite, quite simple, is to create intelligently aggressive firefighters where not only do they know why, but they know how to locate that fire faster, locate that victim faster, and fulfill the mission of the fire service better than they had before. And that incorporates using the training and the technology and not over relying on technology, but using it to aid them in their decision making skills. The inside is all OSB, cut to fit snugly. If you look in the back, we have seven long, long pieces of OSB, seven short pieces for a total of 14. That's all that we're gonna start to burn in here. The other things that we're gonna put in. Got it. We have a couple pieces of carpet. I want to hand this one to Chief Starnes here. He's going to wet that one down. So, you know, we... we I'm, the, I'm the dog you left at home and didn't let out. <laughs> there goes your carpet. <laughs> we, we talk about owning space, right? We talk about wetting everything down, any potential fuels. Hey, this is the fire key. The fire crew did just that. They wetted everything down as they went in, prevented that carpet from off-gassing and heating up. We're going to see how that compares to the crew that didn't. We got our dry carpet here, right? How many of you were taught not to squirt anything on the way to the fire room like I was? I'm going to show you why that's a bad idea. Because what are you crawling past? He's going to get you. Exactly. What's your furniture made of, ladies and gentlemen? Is it made of oak, redwood, cotton, like grandma's furniture? I hate to break it to you. It's made of solidified petroleum. We love our family so much that one chair is equivalent of five gallons of gasoline. I'll bet you got more than one chair in your living room. A mattress is equivalent of four megawatts of heat release rate, which is about 15 gallons of gasoline. You're sleeping on that. So when you crawl through a living room that has three pieces of furniture, an Ikea cabinet and a dog bed, and you don't open the nozzle and there's 500 degrees at the ceiling and an open front door, which is a seven by three ventilation opening, we should not be surprised when the fire lights behind us because we gave it everything it needed to complete the fire triangle. And we are nozzle negligent when it's closed. You are there to save lives and property and you're crawling past property that is off gassing and producing what? Flammable vapors that are mixing and getting ready for ignition. And there's a victim in the floor begging for water and we're scared to death of steaming them and there's 600 to 1800 degrees of radiation coming down on them and 1200 parts per million carbon monoxide and 3400 parts per million hydrogen cyanide when 50 is fatal. And we're, we're thinking things like steam and property damage are more important. You steam me and wash me out in the front yard, I'll survive. I can't survive the alternative. Every little pack comes with their own little firefighter. They come in truckies, engines. They actually had a couple incident commanders. That's right. They got a couple like me. They hold a radio, stand out there. Yeah, no you know. airplane included. Like Shh. <laughs> got to pick on the airport chief. Well, <laughs> what we've come to realize though is every one of these we stick in here. You know, truckies aren't wearing any special gear. They burn just the same. Yes. So watch out. Watch how this this firefighter how he reacts over time to the fire. What you're going to notice is he starts to melt a lot sooner than we would realize. 
pay attention just how the radiation, the energy, the radiation energy coming off the fire in the back and that thermal level as it starts to drop, how it affects him. And the thermal layer gets about here. You can literally take your finger and push on that little firefighter and he'll collapse, fold over. If I can get him to stand up. Yeah, he must be a truckie. He doesn't want to stand up. <laughs> We're going to lean him he up. Want, he wants to get on the roof. He <laughs> wants to get on the roof. Then the last thing we have here is we have some, sh these are shredded political documents. We'll never run out of them. They come in this, these little packs. Chunks Pick your poison. Full of them. Yeah, yeah rush it. <laughs> Republican or Democrat, they're all crooked and they all got paperwork. So here we go. Yeah, it's all BS, exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay these in the corner over here on the right. I'm going to stack them up, but I'm also going to spread a little bit out. What do we know about surface to mass ratio and in, in how things burn? Surface area is faster. Yeah, more surface area. So what we're going to see is you're going to watch how, again, watch how quickly it happens. You know, watch how as, as that, that thermal layer starts to come down. Watch how these ones out here on the edge that are by themselves, watch how they start to disappear. Watch how this pile over here kind of stays for a while, kind of gets that crust over it, where it just kind of chars. You're gonna, you're gonna feel like you work for Psychic Friends Network after this, because you're gonna be able to see it before it happens. Dr. Gasway says the definition of situational awareness is see the bad things before they happen. So with a thermal tool like this, you'll be able to see what's happening to it, cool it off and stop it. Where if you see it and don't do anything, it's not if, it's when. It's well, gonna happen. Cast the fire. That's right. You're the weatherman who actually gets it right, unlike the current weatherman who probably gets beat up more than anybody else. Come on up. Get up in here in this corner so you can see. You can look in there with it while he's doing stuff. It's going to take a little bit to get it started because we're terrible arsonists. If you ever hear me getting caught lighting a fire, you better double check because I'm, I'm not good at lighting any fire. So what's OSB made of while we're waiting? Basically, press press board with what? But is it flammable? You ever seen the video where they take the pole with the water and they reach it out to the grease fire and they dump it over and show you what happened in the kitchen? Do the same thing. Get you a, a cup of that glue from your OSB factory. Get you a burn barrel and do the same thing with a pole and watch what happens. Your whole house is wrapped in that. Everything we sit on is made of this. It's made of this or particle board. It's not made of hardwood. So you are crawling in an environment that is loaded with fuel and it's got all the heat and then we start popping windows and doors without giving it water, it's going to go from a heavy turbulent smoke to floor to ceiling flames. We statistically, watch the University of YouTube, you'll see it every day. We're good at it. We'll pop the front door, we'll take 35 to 40 minutes to get dressed at the front door and then all of a sudden it'll say woof. They're like, hmm, couldn't see that coming. You good? Yep, I think we're good now. All right. So what stage fire breath we have? Incipient, right? Incipient stage fire, nobody gives you a really good definition. Think of anything smaller than you, you know, waste baskets, things like that. We have no rollover. We're not getting that heat transfer really across the ceiling yet where it's gonna to move to other objects. It's confined to that corner over there. What I want you to pay attention with your camera is, wind might be a little difficult on us the way it's blowing in but not too bad as the fire starts to grow what should we start seeing coming out up here on the camera look in there with your camera and look at an incipient stage fire tell me if it looks hotter than what you think pay attention to what he's showing you see this current Brittany are you getting mode change yeah so why why is Brittany able to get change from low sense to high sense are you really high sense to low sense? are you in low sensitivity triangle showing up is everybody in low sensitivity? Are you in low sensitivity I'm back trying, here? I got to try. That's quick. Yep. Yeah, that's quick. <laughs> so that means 2% of whatever it's picking up is over 300 degrees. Yeah. So Typically, whenever we first start, we don't have that. Why would the gentleman standing in the back not be switched to low sensitivity? And Brittany up here kneeled down the front. Some of these are locked in low sense. Yeah, he's a little further away. What do you also notice about her positioning? She's lower. She's lower. And so straight in line. any heat up here being trapped in the corner in the top of the ceiling. What type of colorization are we seeing? Red. You have red some red right, red, right at the base of the fire, probably right up the back corner. Do you have anything at the ceiling? Red. Red? What's happening to the dry? Yeah, it's already burning, right? Already burning. Let me know. Because it's an incipient, starting to move into grow stage fire, as he puts the door closed, what's going to happen? Fire's going to Yeah, yeah, we're 
All that smoke's being trapped in there. It's absorbing the heat. What do you think it's going to look like whenever he opens it back up? Think it's all going to be red, now, red still? I know none of you have ever gotten in trouble at a bar and gotten messed, messed with by a bouncer, but if you've ever been put in a sleeper hold, you're going to look like this fire because you went to sleep. <laughs> What's our collar belt look like now? What are we seeing? How did it change? So we went from red to yellow. What does that tell you about our temperature? Cooled down. We went down What's that? Went down significantly. Yes, yes significantly. he did. He nailed it. Yeah, it's like a third of where it was, isn't it? Yeah. What else are we seeing? Are you seeing any grayscale gases rolling out up here up top? Yeah. Yeah. Can we read the temperature of those gases? No. That is a totally different type of thermography or thermal imaging camera that they use in industrial thermography. We cannot do that with our with our fire service thermal imagers. Now. Every once in a while, you might see video or you might catch it on your camera where some of them are changing color. That's only because it has some, some carbon particles or some soot in it. Those are starting to, starting to read. Those have mass to them, but it's still not accurate, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't let it fool you. Would you stand in front of that for any period of time or hold your bare hand there? No. No. What, are we, good idea. what are we guilty of on the front porch? How many videos? Because I'm sure none of you all have done it. We're up to the front door, sitting in front of the front door, wide open, looking in, putting your mask on. Mm -hmm. If you're the second crew, you walk up maybe with your mask on, load on there, and you stand in that front door just trying to watch, right? Or save air, right? Yeah. We want to stay in there as long as possible, right? So what's happening? If we're standing there and we've got these convection currents rolling out that, you're taking it all in that mask, right? Yeah, we want to, we want to eliminate that. And not only taking the mask, you're taking it in the lungs, but Ladies and gentlemen, right now when you're wearing your turnout gear, you got six layers of protection around your goodies here. And when you put on your mask and your, and your hood, you got one around your brain. And they love us so much, they spent $12 on that piece of plastic. It's around your face. Two to three millimeters thick. That's all you got. Softens at 290 degrees Fahrenheit, ultimate failure between 350 and 600, depending on the mask and the time. But 356 was the average temperature at which those face pieces failed. Do you think 350 sounds hot? No. So does it do any good if this takes 1300 degrees, but this is gone at 300? Pay attention to that. Because without this, you go to victim. You're not a rescuer anymore. So look, look at what's happened to our little engine company guy over here. If you can see on the back, remember how I had a hard time standing him up at first? Yeah, he's leaning backwards. Yeah, he's leaning backwards now. He's pointing towards the fire, right? Oh. Fire's that way, right? That's what he's saying. He's He's softening, he's melting. Oh. Let's take your glove. I've done it. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So was that a very big fire? No. Was there a lot of heat? Absolutely. How many are live burn instructors? No live burn instructors here? How many have been to a live burn? You've stood inside seen somebody stay inside of a burn room for a long period of time. You think they're absorbing a lot of heat energy? Absolutely they are. Let's see how the fire changes this time now. Will this, well our heat, heat's probably gonna drop still, right? But will the fire reignite itself or will we have to reignite it? Now where are we getting in things? Look how much heat's inside there without flames. How many times have you crawled under that? Give it to him, Joey. Is smoke fuel, ladies and gentlemen? Then why were we not taught to cool it? Because in the 1950s, they didn't wanna cool it. Because what did he not have on his back when he was crawling down the hallway? He wanted a bi-directional flow where there was clean air at the bottom and smoke up top. You know why there's an eagle on your helmet? Because they would take it off and break the window and stick their head out and take a deep breath. That's where your term smoke diver came from. You don't need that anymore. You have an air pack, right? So we want to cool it because smoke is basically incomplete what? Combustion. What's the floor look like in this thing with your camera right now? Is it red? Don't get hung up on exact measurements. Remember that spot temperature is something I want you to stay away from. Notice just now our wet carpet is starting to disappear. Firefighter's gone. We've still got some of the stack, some that where it was piled up. We've still got some, but they're charred over. The loose ones around the edge have all disappeared. Oh, that's warm. Yeah. They win. Good. What am I doing if I'm cooling this door? What am I doing? It's called 3D in the door, but you got to check your pattern before you go in the fire, don't you? Where do you put that water? 
you water Mrs. Smith's grass <laughs> or her flowers. Do you know what happens when you did that? Look inside there now. What's around every door to keep your heat and air in? Some type of insulation or a gap. When you do that, it creates negative pressure. It sucks some of that moisture in, it cools the door. And when you open it, that fire, those gases hit what? Moisture. Gives you time to make that assessment they taught you in there. Life, fire, and layout. If you open it, I'm sure this has never happened to you. You open it and then poof. We call that firefighter induced flashover. You know, here it comes. You need a few seconds to make that assessment. So that gave you that few seconds. Does that make sense? I did one. Yeah. So while we're waiting on this to build up just a little bit, take a look at the sides of the box. Remember how you said if it's shiny Come or around. burns or hiding, you Come can around. press the temperature reader and get off of it? Notice what you see on the side of the Max Fire box. How many of you would walk up here and stick your hand on that? Bare hands. Yeah, measure, read the spot temperature on the diamond plating. Just look, 60. Diamond plate a good, I wouldn't put my hand on that. Mm -mm. We get it to 2,000 degrees at the end overall with some of the higher range cameras. So that right there is hot enough that when I laid it in the back of my F-150, it melted my bed liner because I was in a hurry to get home. I gloved up, threw it in there. It melted it. So he's covered the main points. Field of view, though. Did y'all see the difference where you flip the camera sideways? All right, so let's, let's do something. Joey, you mind uh, getting it hot again real quick? I need all of y'all to stand back about, let's go back to the Dodge Ram. Go way back there. All right, that's good right there. Turn around, line up side by side where you can look at somebody's camera. Thing burnt quick. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Wind. Can you see my hand? How many of your cameras are in low sensitivity? All right, come forward about eight feet. And then look again. All right, stop. Can you see my hand? Can you see fingers? Okay, the resolution standard per NFP 1801 says that a firefighter shall be able to identify a small child's hand at 15 feet, a small child's hand being a three-year-old's. Okay, so as you come closer, my hand will get more clear. Come up about five more feet. Stop right about there. So you're at the door looking into a room conducting an oriented search. Can you see my hand? What color is my hand? Gray. What color is my hand over here? What is it? Is it white or is it black over here? Okay. Is either one of these changed temperature? No, this backside of this one is, I can tell you that, it's hot. So what did you just learn? That the further away you are, even with a good camera, the less effective you are. How hard was it to see my hand way back there at that Dodge truck? Couldn't see, couldn't see it. So when you hear firefighters say, oh, I couldn't see nothing. Well, what were you trying to see? And think about the context of what's burning. You crawl in a CrossFit gym and they got mats and tires burning. What kind of smoke are you going to see? Nasty, optically thick. Good luck using a camera in there. How about you go into a warehouse that has one bunch of pallets burning and they've got eight sprinkler heads going. What's that smoke full of? Moisture. You know what's the arch enemy of this thing? Water. So one of the things you want to learn is every time you wipe your face piece, turn the camera around and look at the front of it. This is its eyeball. If you don't wipe this, the screen will go white. It'll get insulation on it. You'll see nothing. So every time you do this, you want to wipe that lens. If you don't, you won't see nothing. Something else. Stop doing it now. Just a minute ago, all you could see down here was black. You know, where was the bulk of our flaming in this? It's on the exterior by the door, right? because we have ventilation point. That's, that's where that mixture is a little better. That fuel to air mixture is a little better. So same thing, you're doing your 360 and you've got a bunch of flames blowing out of one, two or three windows. Does that mean that air, you've got a lot of flaming in behind that, a lot of fire in those rooms? No. Where it's getting air. Yeah, you could literally just have flaming at those windows. Now, if I've got flaming coming out of one window and thick black turbulent smoke coming out of the window next to it, what can I expect? That one's going to light off soon, right? Yeah. There's that forecasting coming in. You ready to do some vent point ignition? Yeah. All right, come on back up to where you were so you can watch. If you have a cell phone, I encourage slow motion video on these. We're going to show you power of smoke and why it's flammable. You may have to light it the first couple times. 
Where did he light that time? Outside. All right, the next time, Joey, I want you to light it either on the porch, right, I have it closed. So nothing's burning, but right there on the edge. All right, shut her down. Look at that. Detached smoke burning outside and then in. Smoke is fuel and it's flammable. Depends on what range, but you were taught white smoke's not good or not bad, is it? White smoke's technically closer to what? Ignition than black smoke is because it's leaning out. Black smoke's too rich, white smoke's too lean. Somewhere in the middle, you don't wanna be, right? So do me a favor, those of you who have the decision-making cameras, stand either that side or this side and look in the lower portion of the box and tell me what you see on the side of the walls. You see, it should see alligatoring or charring. Yeah. What kind of fire do you have to have to produce that kind of damage? So you're crawling down the hallway and you look, your camera has image enhancement, which allows you to see that. That's nasty. Look, at, there you go. Vent point ignition. You see that you should expect a lot of heat and you should expect if you leave the doors and windows open and the nozzle closed, that you're going to see the orange man all around you. Okay. Pretty soon. Just because you don't see anything visibly does not mean there is not heat. If you heard this on the radio, uh, we got a lot of smoke, a lot of heat, but I can't find the fire. Tell me what you see with the camera inside of there. Would you want to cool that off? Because the fire is going to find you. That's why we use that slow-mo feature, because you can go back and show some guys and gals what you just saw. I think we got a couple more in her. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good stuff. Area. Yes, sir. Then we're going to play with a squirt bottle. So you're going to get dual nozzle time. You're going to get nozzle over there and a little bit of nozzle over here. I think she's dying down. Yep. So let's talk them through enhanced stream placement, would you? Right. Yep, absolutely. I'll get one set up if you get the other. A little bit ago, Chief Starnes was talking about the clock, you know, directing people. We're telling them where stuff is. We can do the same thing with our screen. Yeah, please, come on over. Mm -hmm. I'll get out of your way. How many have been in a fire? What are, what are some ways or what are some ways inside of a structure we burn that we locate a fire? What have you been taught? Other than thermal energy. Down, right? You would crackle, right? Mm -hmm. That's where that auditory explosion can become from if you're really amped up. What else? You ever been taught, you know, it's not for water? I had somebody make that comment the other day. Would we like to see that from farther away? How close do I have to be to feel that? Oh, we're saying that though. So you're going to tell him where to put his water. Right now, what do we have in there? A lot of red. A lot of red, right? What do you think is going to happen as he adds water to the equation? Yeah, you're going to get some contrast. You can tell him where the higher heat source is, right? All right, where the seat of the fire is. Go ahead. Let me help you out before you do. Hold on. We're gonna, we're gonna let, right now, you, you know where to put it, right? It's pretty obvious you don't need a tick to say, there's fire there, right? <laughs> so let's help you out a little bit. Did you check your nozzle pattern first? Joey, help me out here, please. Cool, I'm gonna seal it, you close it. Or ki kill it, kill the top. Seal. Let's do it again, we got way too much heat. Now do it. Beautiful. Hear it? There we go. All right. Let it sit for a second. When I open up, you're going to see a lot of heat. You direct him, okay? You're going to have about seven seconds. Go. Are you seeing the colorization go away? Yeah. That's what we call painting or racing the heat. Now, some of my, uh, how do I use this? My very, very educated brothers and sisters overseas have some interesting theoretical discussions about fire and heat, and they're, they're right in the classroom. The problem is, is when I say the word erasing the heat, we're not really erasing all of it, are we? We're erasing the surface temperatures. But what's burning 
Think about it. The surfaces heat up and produce gases that burn. If we cool the surfaces and the gases in there, are we taking care of the problem? Especially if we stop the thing that's off gas. So there's no perfect solution to this, but we're giving you the ability to direct that stream instead of this right here. Right, left, up, down, back, forth, back up, you know? You ever had that guy or gal behind you? You know, that's what I had, right? Now, you're the sniper, you're the spotter. Make sense? Yeah. And then you repeat the process as you go room to room. 1.5 ounces of squirt, right? Imagine what 150 gallon minutes will look like. You're gonna be able to see that stream, you're gonna be able to see that wall, that water hitting the wall. Let's caution you on something real quick though. If this is not connected to you, you put this in front of him and he opens that nozzle and he hits it with a stream, where's your tick going? Bye bye. So show him, tell him, get out of his or her way. Okay? Don't stand there with it. And after he opens the nozzle, what do you think you're gonna have to do to wipe your wipe your face piece and the lens? Because he produced a lot of steam. All right, who wants to go next? Don't be bashful. Yeah, just rotate, <laughs> do something. You give me a little water across the top, Joey. What Ready? else did you do? He's here, door's closed. He cracked that door because you quickly got him in there, right? Show him. Yeah. Do it. Go over there on that side where, I, where they're not eating smoke. If you have a grill fire, are you, you going to leave yeah. the lid off? Mm -mm. All right, now I'm going to open it up. Y'all do your job. Ready? <laughs> 